loved cheerleading. I started training when I was about 12, and then I made varsity my freshman year in high school. But I don't think I'll be cheering next year. My school has two and a half miles of hallway, so that's why I'm in a wheelchair, because sometimes I have those bad days where I'm tired all the time and I can't walk that far. I'm not angry about it because what if I can't make it better? Am I going to be depressed and sad for the rest of my life about it? No. You're going to have to move on and make do with the best you got. hard because Jordan doesn't look disabled. And we have this problem of going out in the world with this child who appears to be a normal boy and then doing something really naughty and people yelling at him thinking that he's doing it on purpose. You know, when they're little cute guys, you don't worry about them in the same way. It's when they get to be big, potentially menacing looking sized people. So we, we, we worry about the future. How many of us respect this? This dishful of disease-producing organisms, if allowed to grow unchecked, may be capable of more widespread loss of life than a dozen atom bombs. But scientists have found a strong defense, vaccines, which stimulate the formation of antibodies. Once formed, they may remain in the blood and confer immunity against another attack of the same disease. I think we take vaccines for granted because we no longer appreciate the seriousness of the diseases that vaccines prevent because vaccines in some way have been a victim of their own success. I was a physician here in, in 1991 when there was a massive measles outbreak. We had seven children who came into this hospital that died of measles, I mean, died of a disease that was easily and safely prevented by a vaccine. And it's extremely hard to watch that happen. It breaks your heart. When diseases were common, vaccines were an easy sell. Now what you see is people who are saying, I don't see these diseases at all anymore. And maybe these vaccines aren't as safe as they're purported to be. But history teaches us how effective vaccines are. Of course, it's, it's reasonable that parents would argue that, that vaccines be held to the absolute highest standard of safety. These vaccines should cause virtually no severe side effects, and that's really pretty much true. I mean, they, they, it's extremely rare that they would, would, would cause any problem, so. I was taught in medical school that vaccines are safe and they're effective. I had no reason to believe otherwise. It wasn't until the New York State passing of the hepatitis B mandate in 1991. It struck me as kind of odd that they were mandating a vaccine for newborn babies when babies were not at risk for developing hepatitis B infection. It made me question whether or not we're doing a service to children by giving them all these vaccines and injections. There's more than just an assumption that vaccines are safe. 
it is pretty much regarded as law. But I don't think it's that black and white. There are many grays, and you have more and more people who are questioning it, and with good reason, because the science is not there to really state that vaccines are truly safe. so tired. Right after you guys left, I started having seizures. So, I'm really sore today. They're very sore today. My muscles are. I have received three Gardasil shots. After the shots, everything went crazy and I started getting sick. I've had two strokes. I have partial paralysis on the right side of my face. I have partial vision and I'm having seizures. Well, she started having problems early this week, and then um, Wednesday she had um, a really bad seizure, and then again on Thursday. So um, she's having an okay day today. She's just taking it easy. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mr. Chris. I'll tell her you called. Bye-bye. My thought of damage from a vaccine was a sore muscle, you know, a rash maybe. I would have never dreamt that this was a side effect of a vaccine. Um, she doesn't talk about it with her friends, you know. She don't talk to anyone. And if I talk to her about it, she gets mad. I mean, it, it maybe, I don't know, maybe she thinks that if we don't talk about it, it's gonna go away. No, because you just cry. It was uh, MTV. No. CMT. I don't know what it was. Anyway, she saves this, and she says, Mom, you've got to see this. You've got to see this. And I said, OK, what? And, and I'm expecting to see some fashion show or whatever. And um, go ahead and show them. Each year in the US, thousands of women learn they have cervical cancer. I could be one less. Because now there's Gardasil, the only vaccine that may help protect I, I would sit there and watch like music videos or something, and every commercial they would come on. And I'm like, Mom, I don't want to, like, get cancer. And I'm like, Mom, I think I need to go get this. And, it but... It crazy. I wasn't going to have sex anytime soon, and I was like, I'm going to wait till I'm married, so it's kind of like, I'm not going to get it anyways. So I don't know what got through my she head. Got, it, got, it got to her. It got to my 15-year-old child. They talked about it amongst themselves at school. Have you got that yet? You need to get that. Did you tell your mom about it? I think we're the only country other than perhaps New Zealand that allows advertising on TV for pharmaceutical drugs. Our children, our population, we are bombarded with ads for Viagra, drugs to do this, drugs to do that. You have restless leg syndrome. You may have PAD and not know it. There's a drug that's right for you. Ask your doctor. Ask your doctor. Yeah, this is unbelievable what we're doing. And we're doing the same thing with vaccines. Gardasil. 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 With Gardasil, you could be one less. I have had so many young girls come up to me and say, I'm so happy. I'm one less. And I said, what do you mean you're one less? She says, I got Gardasil, so I'm one less cancer death. And I said, you know, if you got your pap smears, you would never have been a cancer death. The concept that our daughters are cancer deaths waiting to happen is just not accurate. Our death rate in the United States from cervical cancer is three per 100,000. They have a much higher chance of being a motor vehicle accident death than they do of being a cervical cancer death. Merck was so egregious in their advertising and so aggressive, even though very specifically true, nothing about their advertisement was false. It was false in its overall impressions. This is South Florida CBS 4 News. 
Dr. Diane Harper is one of the world's top experts on the human papilloma virus. In fact, she's one of the leading scientists the pharmaceutical industries turn to. Speaking out for the first time on television, she expresses concerns over what she considers a rush to vaccinate. We don't know yet what's going to happen when millions of doses of the vaccine have been given. Hey, it's Barbara Lowe Fisher with the National Vaccine Information Center. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about what happened to Brianna. I understand she received four vaccines. She called me in tears. Mommy, oh. I had a horrible headache all day long. The National Vaccine Information Center was founded in 1982 by parents of vaccine injured children to prevent vaccine injuries and deaths through public education and defend the informed consent ethic. We started out in the early 1980s working with Congress on the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act, which President Reagan signed into law in 1986. Then what we did was we participated on the government advisory committees that were set up under that law. We've been critics, yes, but we've also had one foot inside the system to convince those that are in power that things need to change. And we feel this is woefully inadequate. This issue has become so polarized. You're either pro-vaccine or you're anti-vaccine. When you take a centrist position, like the National Vaccine Information Center, you are automatically put into a category as being anti-vaccine. But the truth is that we're just trying to make vaccine policies and vaccines safer. How come doctors, they look at me I'm like I have three heads when you go to these appointments? Yes. Like, is this the first time in your career you've heard about this? Well, and that's, you know, that's what we've been trying to do for, for 26 years is, is at least confirm for parents they're not crazy, mm -hmm. they are not imagining anything, no. they're not alone. No. And I didn't set out to be an activist. I wanted to be a writer, but my life took a very different turn when my son was injured by a vaccine. I witnessed his reaction after we'd come back from the doctor's office. It was very quiet in the house. So I went upstairs and I found Chris sitting in a rocking chair, looking straight ahead as if he couldn't see me in the doorway. And I called out his name again and I watched his eyes roll back in his head till I could see the whites of his eyes and his head fall to his shoulder. After that, he became a different child, physically, mentally, and emotionally. He had been this bright, precocious baby, speaking in full sentences by the age of two. After that shot, we got the diagnosis that he was minimally brain damaged, and the recommendation was to put him in a self-contained classroom for the learning disabled. I became committed to reforming the mass vaccination system, and I've worked for 30 years to make vaccine policies safer. In the 1980s, children were being asked to get 23 doses of seven vaccines. In the last three decades, that number has grown to 69 doses of 16 vaccines. That's triple the numbers of doses of vaccines we gave our children in the early 1980s.